Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. You're welcome to Daily Fountain, a daily devotional of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for a brand new day like this. We can't thank you enough for the gift of faith. We pray that through your word this morning, we may come to know that faith in you never fails. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our topic this morning says, Faith Never Fails, Thursday, November 17, 2022. Our text, Daniel 3, 19 to 30. Daniel 3, 19 to 30. And the Bible says, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they hit the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of Velo who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fury furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hot, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar said, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and they frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made an ash heap, because there is no other god who can deliver like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Just to remind us, our topic this morning says, faith never fails. What is faith? Faith, according to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is having complete trust or confidence in someone or something. When you have complete trust or confidence in someone or something. The place we just read is telling us a story of a king known as King Nebuchadnezzar. The king of ba ba Babylon as it were. This king took the Jews from Judah into captivity. And they stayed for captivity for up to 70 years. So from that point, if you read the book of Daniel very well, you find out that from the first to the sixth chapter 
was talking about Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their exploits, what truly really transpired between them and King Nebuchadnezzar. In chapter 1, it talks about the selection of Daniel and the friends as part of the people to serve in King's palace. And remember, Daniel said, when he was asked, he said, I would not divide myself with the king's food. Give us veggies. We're okay with that. And give us 10 days to see if we would not be nourished and even more nourished than other people. And the Lord showed him mercy and it was like Daniel asked. In chapter 2, it talks about the dream King Nebuchadnezzar had and the wise men that he gathered together could not even tell the dream not to interpret it as well. Then Daniel came into the picture where he asked the king, give me some time. I'm going to tell you the dream. Not just tell you the dream, I will interpret it. And he went to ask from God and God revealed in a vision at night. And he came back and told the king exactly what happened and he interpreted the dream. After that, the king promoted him and his three friends. Then coming to chapter four, where chapter three, sorry, where we read. He talks about when the king Nebuchadnezzar made a golden image and asked everyone in the kingdom to bow down and worship the golden image. Some people came and told him, some, some Hebrews, some Jews who are in captivity, whom you selected to be part of the people in the palace, they are not obedient to you. And then he asked that the three of them will be brought, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they brought them to King Nebuchadnezzar. And this is where our introduction starts in the devotional. King Nebuchadnezzar was terribly angry with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for refusing to worship the golden image he ordered to be set up. Why did they refuse to worship the golden image that the king had set up already? There were things that played out between Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the king. Something played out. Something to comfort you, to encourage you, and to encourage myself. To tell us that faith in God never fails. What is that that played out? When the king asked them to bow down, first in verse 16, they said, We have nothing to do with you in this matter, king. We don't even want to contemplate this issue. We can't. We don't want to argue with you. In verse 17, they said, With the God we serve, we deliver us from the burning fury furnace. This God that we serve is going to deliver us. And then they went further in verse 18 to say, But if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, we do not serve your God, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. We cannot worship him, even if he does not save us from you we will not worship God that is the mindset that is the mindset that God wants us to have as Christian when we have faith in him like Esther also said in Esther chapter 4 verse 16 he said if I perish I perish when she was about to visit King Ahasuerus it was not her time he called for a fast and then asked all the people pray and fast let me go in if I perish I perish that's the same mindset that God wants us to have at every point in time. Therefore, he ordered that the furnace be heated seven times more than it was usually done. And they should be thrown into the fiery furnace because the furnace was exceedingly hot. The flame of the fire killed the men who threw them in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The fire killed the men who threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the burning fury. I can just imagine what was uh, going through their minds. You know, they were seeing the fire being heated several more times. They were seeing themselves getting closer to death. Um, it can just be, if you want to imagine that, you can relate it to someone being in his house and an arm robber comes, probably armed, well armed, pointing the gun on your score or towards your score. And he is telling you, do this or you die. And you can just see that the, the line between you and death is just his finger, just the trigger. You can just imagine it. That was the way they felt. I feel that was the way they felt. Seeing the burning boss still, they said, if I perish, I perish. 
That is the type of faith that never fails. Sometimes the faith that excites God is the faith of even if he doesn't, I still would serve you. That's the type of faith that really excites God to move because he knows that you, you, you don't, you are not serving him because of everything. You may not gain anything from the situation. So God will arise and show you that having faith in him would never fail. That's the same thing. They is beaten in the presence of King Nebuchadnezzar. And he went further to say the three Hebrew brothers remain resolutely steadfast in their faith in the face of a death sentence. And you can see that they remain resolute. Like I said earlier, they were seeing themselves getting closer every second, every minute, every time. At the ticking of the time or the clock, they were getting quite closer to their death. And still they said, King, I would never, we would never bow down to your God. Even if God doesn't save us, we would never do that. That is the type of faith that God wants us to have, even as we move out this morning. They believed in the Lord and held on to the word of God, which says, When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scout you. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. I want to just give a little illustration here for us to truly understand what it truly means to walk through fire and you will not be scorched, or through water and it will not overflow you. That's Isaiah 43, verse 2. And it says, when you pass through waters, I will be with you. They shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. That is the word of the Lord. What is that illustration? If you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible made us to understand that Jesus, that God made us in his own image. When he said, let us make man in our own image. So we are resemblance of God. We are made in the image of God. And what is it? What do we carry as children of God? If you also read John chapter 4, the encounter between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Something happened there. And he said, he asked the woman for water. And the woman said, we don't have anything. The Samaritans don't have any relationship with the Jews. Why are you asking me of water? And Jesus said, if you know the person asking you to give him water, to give him water, you would even ask him and he will give you the living water. And when he gives you that living water, you would never, never again taste in your life. That is Jesus telling the Samaritan, I am the living water. Ask of me. Ask whatever you want and I will give you that living water. Also in baptism, we are baptized with water. Water is very, very important in the life of a Christian. It's a sign of life and we are baptized in water as well. So when you are a child of God, when you are made in image of God, you are a carrier of that living water in you. You carry that living water. The presence of Jesus is in you. And the, Jesus said to the Samaritan, I would give, and you never thirst again, meaning I'll give a surplus of it, excess of it. And also, if you read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, the Bible says that the God we serve is a consuming fire. The God that we are made in his image is a consuming fire. Also in Acts of Apostles chapter 2, we witnessed another instance of fire, but this one a kind of a peaceful fire of the Holy Spirit coming like droplet of fire on the head of the apostles or the early disciples at the time. So you can see that as a child of God, what you carry, you carry these two things. You are equipped with the living water of God. You are equipped with the fire, both the peaceful fire and the consuming fire of the Lord. You are all and all. You are ready and equipped for battle. Now, when the Bible says that when we pass through waters, I will be with you, they shall not overflow you. You know, when you get water and one enemy of water is fire. When you light up fire under a bowl or something, you, you, feel, you have filled water into it and you light up fire. When you light up fire, it keeps increasing. The temperature keeps increasing until it gets to probably 100 degrees Celsius and it begins to evaporate. And before you know it, you will not see the fire, you will not see the water again. 
So fire usually when you walk through waters of life, storms of life, what God is telling us here that you have an excess of water in you. You have surplus of water in you to quench the, f the, 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 the fire of life, to quench the challenges that you're going to face today, to quench the consuming fire all around you because you have the living water of Jesus in you. You have the living water of God with you. And also when you pass through water, that's what the Bible is telling us. You carry the consuming fire of the Lord. You carry the fire of the Lord to dry up every form of water on your way. You would dry them up and they would never have an effect in you again. So when you are out today and all those things are made possible when we have faith in God, when we have faith in Jesus Christ, because faith makes us to continue to trust God, to fulfill everything we ask of him, to trust God, to deliver us from every problem. We keep applying water on the fire of life. And as we keep applying in faith, believing that one day that fire will quench, you find that fire quenching. We will keep applying fire to the water and to the storm of life. And before you know it, it begins to dry up. That is what the Bible is telling us, that faith is very, very necessary. And the faith that can help this to be actualized in our life is the faith that never fails. That faith of, if I perish, I perish. That faith of, God, even if you don't do this, I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep serving you until you do it. Because I know definitely on the long run, you are going to do that. And that is the faith I present to you. That is the faith I present to myself this morning. And that faith in God never fails. Their faith worked for them. Beloved, as you're facing any life threatening, are you facing any life threatening circumstances? You are not alone. The son of God who was with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in verse 25 in the furnace of fire is very much with you. Oh, now I remember why Jesus, the Son of God, appeared and made them four in the fire. The living water appeared in the burning fire and made them four to quench the effect of the fire in their lives. And truly, Nebuchadnezzar said, I see the fourth man. I see the fourth man and he looks like the Son of God. May God appear in your situation. As you move out today, I pray May the living water quench every effect of fire in your life in the name of Jesus. And may the fire that you carry, may God supply enough heat to dry up every storm of life as you move out this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't want further to say, if God is for you, who can be against you? Romans 8, 31. Faith never fails. Rather, it promotes. We are advised, we are encouraged by a devotional this morning to have faith in the living water. When we have faith in the living water, when we have faith in God, when we have faith in Jesus, when we have faith that Jesus can do all things and faith in him and on him will never fail. And it goes further to say in our prayer, O oh Lord my God, in your mercy, increase my faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Make it your prayer this morning. Tell God, Father, increase my faith this morning. I say move out. May my faith conquer every problem and challenge that I would face. May the fire in me dry up every water. May the water that I carry be a source of power that will quench every fire that uh, I will encounter today. Make it your prayer and ask God, O oh Lord, the giver of faith, we pray as we move out this morning, may our faith in you never fail. May those who are yet to have faith in you receive the grace to acquire enough faith to pull through the challenges of this perilous time. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.